In this week's Cone Clip video, we talked to Graham Sterling from Biol Crop in Brisbane. Uh, Graham's had many years of experience in the research of nematodes across a number of industries, including the sugar industry. So, Graham, are nematodes a big problem in the sugar industry? Well, we did some work about 10 years ago, and we estimated they're costing the industry $80 million a year. You know, they cause between 7 and 10% losses, but that can be highly variable. There are some soils where you get 30 or 40% losses, and others where you get very limited losses. But they're certainly a problem. Lesion nematode, for example, example is in every cane field in Queensland. There's extremely high populations in the Burdekin for example in certain parts of the sugar industry so they're definitely causing problems. So is there an easy way to tell whether you've got a problem? Well the, because you're only dealing with losses that are often in the five or ten percent range it's really difficult there's a hundred and one other things that can cause those sort of losses in, in sugar cane. So the first step is to get a nematode count done and actually find out what you know, you've actually got in your soil and uh, and basically, if you've got a, uh, if that nematode count shows you've got high numbers of plant parasites, the ones that attack the plant, and low numbers of the beneficial nematodes, then you've got a, a soil health problem and a, a nematode problem. So, if you did want to test that, where would you, yeah, where would it likely providers yeah. be who would be able to assist yeah. you in getting a count? Yeah. Well, uh, BSES at, uh, in North Queensland at Tully, uh, Rob McGarry's group, they provide that service, so that's probably the best way. We can do it ourselves, I'm not really looking for the work, I'm happy if Rob, Rob does it. <laughs> so, Graeme, if, if there are problems in people's fields, what are the options that they have in terms of their management? Well, the problem is in the past, we've looked for silver bullet solutions. So we work out a nematicide, for example, and all the data shows that all a nematicide will do will reduce the population of nematodes by 30, 40 percent, two or three months. In a crop like cane that's grown for several years, that's, to my point of view, a really waste of time. We can use a legume, like a, a soybean or peanut. They will drop the populations by 80, 90 percent. So that's great. You know, the crop gets away because it's got no nematode problems initially, but the problem is the nematodes still come back. So six months later, you, and it's a bit like a nematicide, you've got high populations again. So if you're really going to have a sustainable solution to the problem, you really need to get the biology working so that all those parasite and predators that are actually in the soil are actually working for you and keeping that population under control. So what are the keys to getting that biology functional? Well, again, it goes back to looking after carbon getting carbon inputs right. We, we have shown, for example, that the, the soil just under a trash blanket is highly suppressive to nematodes. But you go down 15 centimetres and you've lost that suppression because, you know, but, but if over time we could keep that, those carbon levels gradually building up and practically going further down the profile, hopefully we can get to a point where the top 10 centimetres of soil has actually got a good carbon level. And then we'll have a lot of biology there. There's a whole range, there's probably hundreds of parasites and predators of nematodes, fungi, bacteria, other arthropods and things that eat nematodes. The other things we want in our soils, and we'll only do that if we look after ourselves properly. So the key message for growers today is that uh, the retention of carbon in the soil is a key tool in terms of the management of, of the nematode problem. Yeah, that's right, and, and the, really the, uh, the cane industry doesn't look after its carbon. You, know, you see plenty of examples, people bail it up and sell it to someone else, or they put it in a mill and make electricity out of it. It's a vital resource that should be going back to the soil. And our, cane, our carbon levels in soils are 50% lower than they were 100 years ago. And we need to do a, a fair bit of work, to, I think, to increase them back to a level where we've actually got some biology there again. Sure. Thanks very much for your time today, Graham. Yeah, okay. Thanks.